Hi, I'm Rose at 3 Digitalis and I just watched the 1987 classic John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness. Compared to his other works, Halloween. <laughs> Escape from New York. About an hour ago, a small jet went down inside New York City. The president was on board. The president of what? And ghosts of Mars. Any questions? Hey, put your hand down. Prince of Darkness is somehow both universally enjoyed and relatively unknown. Mention his Lovecraft piece in the Mouth of Madness and everyone knows what you're talking about. Mention the one about fighting the god of anti-creation, Jesus being an aliens and Alice Cooper stabbing a guy with a bicycle and you get blank stares. Well, what? Pretty much that. Prince of Darkness is based around the concept that the people in the Middle Eastern region of Joshimin were under the rule of an alien being known as Shaitan for thousands of years, using his science to keep the people under control. Another alien, using the Hebraic name Joshua, arrived and battled him in and around Joshimin devastating the region, eventually driving him into an alternate dimension. The alien left a sealed hibernation device containing a psychoactive clone that would allow him to re-enter our dimension in 2000 years. Joshua and his followers took the canister and hid it from both the Judaic and Roman authorities, but he was later executed by the Roman authorities for sedition. Fortunately, he was able to teach James enough advanced science and mathematics that he was able to write a detailed warning for future generations. Joshua's remains were later recovered by his people. But the canister was not taken into their custody. By then James had left for Spain, taking it with him. First, that's just the backstory you pick up from idle chit chat from the cast. Second, I'm pretty sure that's the same plot as Targate. And see, Mr. Carpenter, please make the prequel to Prince of Darkness. That movie sounds awesome. Prince of Darkness opens with Father Loomis contacting physics professor Howard Birak asking him to help him identify and explain an ancient canister and its contents. The canister has been kept secure for nearly 2,000 years by a secret group of Catholic priests known as the Brotherhood of Sleep, but was hundreds of thousands of years old, predating human history and society. The group and the canister were even kept secret from the Pope. Professor Birak hijacks his class, offering them extra credit to assist him over the weekend. They're joined by Father Loomis and a few specialists in language and biology. Most of the principal cast consists of Professor Birak, a physics professor, Kelly, one of Professor Birak's students, Father Loomis a Catholic priest who works for the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, Dr. Leahy, a biologist, Walter, Catherine, and Brian three of Professor Birak's students, and Calder, a microbiologist. Any Sam Raimi and B-movie fan should recognize Calder right off. I've got seven more points. There are a lot of characters quickly introduced, but most of them, even those that get established with dialogue and defined personalities, will either get mind-controlled or killed pretty quickly. There are also several cameos by Alice Cooper, but he plays it straight and isn't central to the story. It takes about 30 minutes to get to the first gill, and for an hour rated Carpenter horror movie, it's pretty <laughs> tame. The body count in this one doesn't even break 10, which would have been about two thirds of the principal cast. There are a few logical and continuity issues I'll get to in the spoilers. Overall, this is a fairly solid movie. It's definitely a slow burner, but it is unnerving. Carpenter's moody and repetitious score throws off any sense of comfort, but it's very 80s and will sound alien to younger watchers. The street people's sudden appearances are jarring. Donald Pleasance and Victor Wong, as always, shine in their roles. Pleasance as the desperate priest questioning his faith mirrored by Wong as the methodical scientist probing for answers. 
Why weren't we told the truth? <laughs> Without the technology to confirm, it would have been another legend. But he was our prisoner, not yours! Spoilers in three, two, one. Who types out a letter, prints it, has it hand delivered, and waits for a physical response instead of making a phone call. First time Loomis and Birak go into the canister's room, all the candles are lit. Who lit them? Stage lights, expensive and sensitive electronic equipment, and lots of tripping hazards. Let a hot wax and fire to the room with hundreds of candles. For those of you wondering, Green News was the blue sky beams of the 80s. I just don't know. He slimed me. That's great! Actual physical contact! <laughs> From a broken canister nearby. It's always weird that no one really cares that worms are spontaneously appearing on a window. I'd be staring at them off and on all day. Every time I watch this movie, this jump scare always gets me. The music, the setting, the sound effects, and the actress, and Murray Howard, draw me into the scene. <coughs> Looking back, I wonder how the story would have gone if they'd included video cameras to monitor the canister from the lab. That thing down there just directed a fairly sizable burst of energy. In a straight line, with a precision of less than a millisecond. It's also weird that they didn't install an intercom or bring walkie-talkies. I'm just thinking about needing someone's help with anything and everyone else is two floors up in the lab. Why are they still using the room with the worm window? Who does that? How long are you going to leave those worms on the window? them up and they come back. What about switching to a different room? Meh. I've already got all my stuff set up and I'm pretty comfy. I love that in this movie, Father Loomis is arguing that science and truth can save the world and that evil can be mathematically determined. But Dr. Loomis argued that evil and feelings trump science. And then another seven tried to keep him locked up because I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. Frank Wyndham, a character announcing that nothing they've seen can be happening so they can be killed off to prove that everything they've seen is happening. Oh, this priest is a real case. He is Looney Tunes. And I'm beginning to wonder about Byrak, too. We begin seeing into the character's dreams and see that everyone who stays at the church has visions of the front of the church with a dark figure standing in the doorway. These scenes always hit me pretty hard when I first watched this. There's nothing overtly scary about it, but it's so otherworldly and eerie. Fortunately, Susan decides to set us up with some girl-on-girl -girl action. <laughs> Tease. The title said Milfin sucks Asian teen squirting. I feel so lied to. Meanwhile, Kelly is complaining about the most obviously not an injury to ignore when fighting a being that may as well be the devil bruise until stigmata was made years later. It's just a bruise I got somehow. <sighs> While, Frank Wyndham, who only has three acting credits and went on to work in visual effects for the last 30 years, gives one of the creepiest performances I've ever seen. I've got a message for you, and you're not going to like it. Ready for death. 
I got nothing. That was just unsettling. Out of everything. Worm windows, men eating beetles, beetles eating man, death by Alice Cooper, chopstick in the eye. This one shot always stays with me. And then to spend eternity in another universe where safety was inches out of reach. That was John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness. Part 2 of his Apocalypse Trilogy. A movie without a happy ending and without hope. There've been a few rumors that Carpenter is looking into making a sequel, but I'm not holding my breath and, honestly, I don't know what else would be added to the story after more than 30 years. Thanks for watching. This was Rose at 3 Digitalis wishing you a happy Halloween. Please like, share, and subscribe. We are the Borg. Lower your shields and surrender your ships. We will add your biological and technological distinctives.